I will now talk about a powerful technique that we use in computer science and in mathematics in general that we call recursive definitions. Recursive definitions. And this is a concept where we can define a function or a set or a structure by invoking the same function or the same set or the same structure on elements that we have already defined. Okay, so for example, I will start with with recursively defined recursively defined functions. So what does it mean to define functions recursively? Imagine that I am now, just for the sake of illustration, I'm talking about functions from the naturals to the naturals. Okay, so I have a function f from n to n. And just as a reminder here, I will assume that n is 0, 1, 2. Okay, so it's all the non-negative integers. And I want to define the function recursively. The way we define it recursively is, first, I have to talk about the basis step or the base case, okay? So the basis step or the base case. And here I need to define, basically I need to specify what f of zero is, okay? So you can specify what f of zero. It could be f of zero equal five, f of zero equal million, f of zero equal zero. The second thing, now I need to go to the recursive recursive step and now we basically I need to specify a rule or set of rules to define f of n based on elements or values based on combination of the elements f of 0, f of 1, all the way to f of n minus 1. In other words, we need to specify f of n in terms of terms before it. Okay, so I, I first specify f of 0, then from that I say f of 1 I define f of 1 in terms of f of 0. I define f of 2 in terms of f1 and f of 0. It could be just f of 1. I don't need f of 0, but that's where the combination comes here into the picture. So let's see actually a couple of examples. Suppose I want to define first all the natural numbers recursively. So if I want to define all the natural numbers recursively, and I want to use the, the, the function notation, it's really I can... I can talk about f of zero, the basis step, that f of zero is zero. And I can talk about the recursive step, that f of n is f of n minus one plus one. Right? This is for every n greater than or equal to one. So how does this work? How do I apply this? I say, okay, let me look at f of zero. It is zero. What is f of one? f of one, according to the recursive step, is f of zero plus one, which is zero plus one, which is one. What is f of two? It's f of one plus one, which is one plus one equals two. And if you evaluate this, you will notice that f of n is f of n minus one plus one equal n minus one plus one equals n. So this is a very simple function and this is a recursive definition of it, right? In the sense that I did not give, if I wanted to define this function explicitly, I would have said an explicit definition. It's not a recursive definition. Explicit definition would have been f of n equals n. And of course, this is how we would define such a function and this would be for every n greater than or equal to zero. This is explicit definition. But on top there, I give this definition for the same function using recursive definitions, okay? So recursive definitions are very important and very powerful because they allow me sometimes to define functions or sets or structures for which it's not easy to come up with an explicit definition for the terms. 
Okay, so one very one uh, one other example here. Let's talk, for example, about if I define a function as f of zero equals equals zero, and f of n equals f of n minus one times two plus two. Okay, so if I look at this and try to evaluate it, what do I get? And again, here notice that the first line here. It is the base case and the second line is the recursive step. If I try to evaluate this, f of zero is zero. f of one is two times f of zero plus two. And this would be two times zero plus two equals two. If I look at f of two, it is two times f of one plus two, which is two times two. f of one is two plus two. This would be six f of 3, I will see 2 times f of 1 plus 2, sorry, 2 times f of 2, and this 2 f of 2 is 6, 2 times 6 is 12, plus 2 it's 14, f of 4, we can continue to do this, f of 4, it is 2 times f of 3 plus 2, which is 2 times 14 plus 2, it is 30. And so on. So you see here the, the set of, of the, the values of the function that we are defining are 0, 2, 6, 14, 30, and so on. Okay? So this is a recursive definition of this function. Now, sometimes sometimes we have we have to for the for the base case or for the basis step we have to define more than one element or the value of the function for more than one element. And maybe the most famous example of that is the Fibonacci function or Fibonacci numbers. Right? So if I look at the Fibonacci numbers, remember that Fibonacci sequence or numbers, is the, every element is defined as the sum of the two elements before it. But for that, I need to specify for the base case or for the basis step, I need to define that f of zero is zero, for example, f of one is one. And then for the recursive step, I can define that f of n is f of n minus one plus f of n minus two for every n greater than or equal to two. Now, Notice that since the recursive step applies for n for every n greater than or equal to 2, this is a well-defined rule because f of 2 is f of 1, f of 1 plus f of 0. And both of these terms are given to me by the basis step. If I define the basis step as just f of 0 and the recursive step as just f of n for n greater than or equal to 2, or for n greater than or equal to 1, I will be in trouble. Okay, let me actually illustrate that. So in, suppose instead I said the basis step is that f of 0 equals 0, and the recursive step, step is f of n equals f of n minus 1 plus f of n minus 2 for every n greater than or equal to 1. We will have a problem when I come and ask, what is f of 1? f of 1, according to the recursive step, is f of 0 plus f of minus 1. But where do I get the f of minus 1? Where do I get this from? Okay. So this is a problematic definition because we defined it for f of 0 equals 0. f of n depends on the two elements before it, but I didn't specify two conditions for the start for the basis step okay so this is not a good definition here of fibonacci numbers and this is why i really need to define the value of the function for the first two elements and then i give the recursive step for the remainder and this is a general rule it's not just for fibonacci if for example you decide to define a function let's say if you decide to define for the recursive step that f of n is, is f of n minus 1 plus 2 f of n minus 2 plus 3 f of n minus 3. If I want to do that, then I have to give for the basis, 
for the basis step, I have to define f of 0 equal what? f of 1 equals what? And f of 2 equals what? Because then I can define the recursive step for n greater than or equal to 3. And when I come to apply it for the, the first n or for the smallest n, f of 3 is defined in terms of f of n minus 1. Actually, let's put the actual values here. f of 2 plus 2 f of 1 plus 3 f of 0. But all of these terms have already been defined for me in the basis step. Okay, So please keep this in mind that if the recursive step makes use of the of k terms before n we have to define the basis step for the first k terms there okay now other things also that we can do with recursive definitions is that sometimes we can look at the summation so for example i can have a summation of the form s n is the sum from i equals zero to n of a i I can define this recursively, this summation as, as well. The basis step here would be S0 equals A0, right? Because it's a sum from 0 to 0 of a, AI, which is uh, A0. For the recursive step, if you look at this, what is Sn plus 1? It is the sum of I equals 0 to N plus 1 of AI which is the sum of i equals 0 to n of a i plus a n plus 1. And this term here is the s n plus a n plus 1. So the recursive step in this case is s n plus 1 is s n plus a n plus 1. Okay? And this would be the rule for n greater than or equal to 1. Okay? Um, Actually, for this one here, sorry, for n greater than or equal to 0, because when we take the n equals 0, the first one will be s1 equals s0 plus a1, okay? Uh, so these are some of the, the ways we can define this. I can also now define sets. I can define sets as well. So recursively defined sets. I can give you, for example, the following definition, like the basis is 0 is in the set S. And for the recursive step, I can say the following. If x is an S, then x plus 7 is an S. Okay, so I give you this recursive definition. I did not tell you what the elements of S are explicitly. I didn't say the elements are, you know, 2, 3, 4, 5. No, I'm saying 0 is in that set S. And I'm saying if X is an S, then X plus 7 is an S. So the question is that what is S? Okay. We know that 0 is an S, right? From the basis, from the basis step. The recursive step tells us that if x is an s, x plus 7 is an s. Well, 0 is an s. 0 is an s. Then by recursive step, it imp this implies that 0 plus 7 is an s. This means that 7 is an s. Now we have 7 is an s. 7 is an s. By the recursive step, then 7 plus 7 is an s. Then 14 is an s. 14 is an s. Then by recursive step, 21 is an S. Okay, so what is this definition here? Recursive, this recursive definition. This recursive definition of the, is of the set 7i, where i equals 0, 1. Okay, for all the natural numbers. So this is the set of all natural numbers that are multiples of 7. And this is how I can define a set like this. Now, we have other sets and other structures that are very important in computer science that we also define one of the most convenient ways about them to define them is recursively. And the first one I will talk about is the set of all strings. The set of all strings over alphabet sigma. 
Okay, so it's very important to understand what I mean by this kind of language, the set of all strings over alphabet sigma. So sigma is the alphabet for English, for example, the alphabet is the letters from A to Z and so on. If I wanted, for example, the binary alphabet, I can say the alphabet sigma is zero one. I can make my sigma for the for D and A to be A, C, T, G, the four nucleotides. If I wanted it for the English language, I can say it is A through Z. Let me just, for example, say we are talking about small letters. So alphabet is the set of letters that you can use to form strings or words over that alphabet. Okay. And I want to define the set of all strings. Let's focus because it's the shortest of them or the smallest of them. Let's focus on the binary alphabet. What is the set of all binary strings that I can form? Of course, I can form the, the string zero. There's the string that has the letter one. There is zero, 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 one, one, zero, one, one, zero, 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 and so on. Of course, this is an infinite set. There is another special string that is defined over any alphabet, over any alphabet, and that is what we call epsilon here. Epsilon is the, the empty string it's a string that has no letters in it. It's an empty string and it is defined over any alphabet, including the empty alphabet, okay? So even if the alphabet has no letters, I ask, can you form the empty string over an alphabet that has no letters in it? The answer is yes, because you don't need letters anyway to form the empty string. So this set of all strings over an alphabet, this is what we denote by sigma star, okay? Sigma star is the set of all strings that you can form over an alphabet, okay? So if you look at it for ACTG, it's the empty string, it's the string that has the letter A, string that has the letter C, T, G, and so on. So the question is that how do we define the set of all strings? We wanna define, I wanna define, sigma star for a given for a given finite alphabet of course finite sigma okay <clears throat> so the basis step for this is what is the first string what is the simplest string that you can form over this is the epsilon this empty string so i am saying that i know that the empty string is in the set of all strings over sigma then how do I do recursive step? Recursive step. I say that if, ips, sorry, not epsilon. If W, if W <coughs> is one of the strings there and little sigma is one of the letters, okay? Please be, pay attention here. I'm talking about W being in sigma star, which means W is a string in sigma star, and little sigma is an element of sigma, which is, means it's a single letter. If I have a string in sigma star and a letter in sigma, then I can form a new string by saying W, and I will put that letter sigma all the way on the right. I will attach it to the right or append it to the right of the string. This gives me the set, that uh, gives me a new string that is in sigma star. So how do I apply this, for example, on sigma being zero and one? Well, let me look at sigma star and I start building it element by element. Basis step tells me that epsilon is there, right? The recursive step tells me that if W is in sigma star and sigma is in sigma, it's a letter, then I can put that letter sigma to the right of, of epsilon and I get a new string. Well, if you take W, if you take W to be the epsilon and you take little sigma to be zero, then W sigma, which is the epsilon with zero, which is just zero because epsilon is an empty string, is also in sigma star. So I can put now zero is in sigma star. The same thing if I take W to be epsilon and sigma to be the letter one, then epsilon W sigma, which is epsilon, one, which is one, is also in sigma star, so I can add one. If you take W to be zero, 
and and little sigma to be zero, then you will get using the recursive step, you will get this. If you take w to be zero and little sigma to be one, you will get zero one by the recursive step. If you take w to be one and sigma to be zero, you will get one zero. If you take w to be one and sigma to be one, you'll get one one and so on. So this definition is going to generate all possible strings over sigma. One important point that I need to make that applies to everything I have said so far is something that we call the exclusion exclusion rule. So if you look at how I'm, I have been writing, for example, if we look at this definition of sigma star, I'm saying epsilon is in sigma star. And if W is in sigma star and sigma is in sigma, then W sigma is in sigma star. What about other elements that are not generated by these rules? Can I put them in the set sigma star? The answer is no. And this is always implicit in these definitions. So the exclusion rule tells me that anything, any, anything that's not generated by these rules will not be part of this set, okay? So you cannot generate something that you cannot have something that's not generated by these rules and put it in the set. Okay, so we don't, if I want to be extra formal about this, I would say basis step is epsilon is in sigma star, recursive step is W in sigma star and sigma is in sigma, then W sigma is in sigma star. And then I would put the exclusion rule, exclusion rule here and say nothing else is in sigma star, okay? So this should be actually added to every definition we have seen and every other definition we'll see, but this is why we make it implicit. We don't write it every time. It's always implicit that what the rules generate are members of that set. Nothing else can be a member of that set, okay? So these are very important things to keep in mind. Now, Another thing that we can do is that once I define these recursive structures, I can also define functions on them recursively. So suppose I want to define the length of the string, the length, the length of string w in sigma star, okay? So what's the length of a string? Of course, that the length of the empty string is zero. It has no letters. The length of the string zero, zero, zero is three. It has three letters and so on, right? How do I define this recursively? I define this recursively by using the recursive definition of strings. So for the basis step, I say that L of epsilon, if I use L of as the function here of that corresponds to length, I say L of epsilon is zero for the basis step. And then for the recursive step, recursive step, remember that we define for the recursive step that W is formed is W and sigma, which is what's the length of W and sigma. So we in the recursive step we form that string W sigma that is formed by taking string W and appending to it on the right a letter sigma. And I define this recursively by saying the length of this string is the length of whatever that W was plus one. Why is it one? This one here comes from the length of sigma, the string that has one letter is just one, okay? So L of W sigma is L of one, L of W plus one here, okay? Let me just clean this one, L of one, where W is in sigma star and sigma is in sigma, okay? So this is how I would define the L and really apply it to any string you want, you will see that it gives you the right value of the string. Okay, so this is how I would define, I would define these terms. The last thing I want to show here is that another structure we define recursively and it's very powerful, very important, is that the set, the set of all fully binary, oh, sorry, full, the set of all full, not fully, full binary trees. And let's just F, B, Ds, okay? So I wanna define the set of all full, full binary trees and let me give you the, the actual definition of it. So the basis step, 
the basis step is the tree that consists of a single node, the tree that consists of a single node, single node R is an FBT. It is a fully binary tree, okay? Why do I call it R? Because R is going to be the root, okay? As you will see. The recursive step, recursive step is if T1, if T1 and T2 are full binary trees whose roots are, let's call them whose roots, R, R1 and R2 respectively respectively what this mean, respectively means R1 is the root of T1 R2 is the root of T2 then the tree then T1 circle or dot T2 is a full binary tree is a full binary tree that consists consists of a root of a root r that has two children that has the two children r1 and r2 okay so what does this mean? How do I apply this definition of full binary trees? What is the set of all full binary trees? Okay, so if I wanna call the set of all full binary trees, this FBT set. This, it's a node that's called R, is a full binary tree by itself, right? Then the definition tells me that if you take two full binary trees and make them the children of a new root, then that's a full binary tree. So then I can say, okay, this is a full binary tree. This node by itself is a full binary tree. This comes from the basis step. This is a full binary tree, comes from the basis step as well. I can use the basis step multiple times to get this node. And the recursive step tells me add a new root here, R, and make this, the, the, two, the other two make it as their children. So this new tree that has one root and two children is a full binary tree, okay? Now I can apply this again. I can say, for example, so let, let me call this here T0, for example, and let me call this T1. Another way, and now I can create more trees. By recursive step, I can take T0. This is T0. I can take T1. I can create a new root and make these two as its children. So this will be a new tree T2 in the set of full binary trees. I can do it the other way around as well. I can actually make the T1 as the left child and T2, T0 as the right child. And we can do this. And this will be, let's say, T3. Okay, this is another full binary tree. Notice that I can take T1 itself twice. I can take T1, I can take T1, and I can create a new root, make these two T1 and T1, sorry. If this is T1 here, and this is T1, I can make them both children of the new root. And I can continue to generate all the trees. So if you look at this, this is the set of all binary trees, not balanced or anything like that, but that's, that's not a requirement for us. And using the this simple and succinct definition, recursive definition, I can actually define de define the set of all full binary trees. It's a beautiful definition. It's very short. I don't have to talk about graphs and and you know properties that in the the in the in degree of a node is one or two or anything like that. You can give a beautiful succinct definition by using recursion. And the last one I want to show here is the height of a full binary tree. So I want to define define the height define h of t the height of fbt 
full binary tree T recursively. For the base basis, basis step, I would say that H of T is zero for T consisting of only consisting of only one node. Okay? So in the basis step of the definition of FPT, we had a tree that has a single node. The height of that tree is zero. The recursive step, recursive step is, let me first, before I write it, let me actually illustrate it. So suppose I had something like this. This is a full binary tree actually that could have been, that could have been built using our recursive definition and you should be able to find out. What is the height of this tree? The height of the tree is the length of the longest path from the root to any of the leaves in the tree. So if I look at this, at this path here, the length is one. If I look at this path here, it is two. If I look at this path here, it is three. If I look at this path here, it is three as well. The height of this tree is three. It is the length of the longest path from the root to a leaf. So if you think about it, if you think about it now, this tree was formed by taking this tree and attaching to it this one. And we took these two trees and we added an edge to the new root here, right? So if you think about it, the height of this tree, the height of this tree, it is one plus the height of that tree that has a single node or the height of the other child of the root, which is this tree. And I need to take the maximum of these, right? Because it's one and not the height of the left child, but it's the height of the right child because it's the one that's longer. So for the recursive step, the recursive step is that if T1 and T2 are FBTs and T equals T1, T2, it's this, this is a tree that we formed by the recursive rule, then the height of T is one plus the max of the height of T1 and the height of T2. So if you look here, we have the recursive definition. We used H again on T1 and T2, and we defined H of T in terms of, of both of these ones, okay? So recursive definitions, for the basis step, you basically define the basic, the basic building blocks in your structure. And for the recursive step, you show how you build more complex uh, elements of that structure or instances of that structure using the basic ones and new ones that you build. Please keep in mind this exclusion rule that whenever we write the basis step and recursive step, implicit in that definition is the fact that nothing else can be in that set.